Yesterday I shared uh, an ECG, which was very commonly asked during examination scenarios and uh, asked all the colleagues to answer. And I've seen uh, there are various answers for this very simple and commonly asked ECG in ECG quiz or even talks or any other examination. So that's why I thought I should do an elaboration on that ECG and uh, convey it in a form of a video. So that was the ECG I, I, I have shared. A 50 years old male, no known cardiac history, palpitation with dizziness for 15 minutes, blood pressure 70 by 50, diagnosis and management. I saw various answers. RBB, okay, it's there. Uh, even some, some of you have answered it as an ST elevation MI. Okay, there's no, no chest pain in the history. It's pure palpitation in a pre-existingly normal person without chest pain. So always correlate your features with, with the clinical presentation as well. So I'll give you a brief hint towards assessing rhythm. Whenever you are assessing rhythm, go with this summary. Rate, regularity, P wave, PR interval, and QRS duration or QRS morphology. If you focus on these five points, you will never be mistaken in assessing rhythm. Let's see our rhythm. If you see carefully here, it's rhythm. And if you continue to see that here, that it's, it's, it's irregular. You see, continue to see that it's all irregular, very clearly. If your eyes are habitual of seeing these RR complexes and identifying the most clear-cut peak, PR, uh, peak of the R waves and just uh, correlate it with, with each other, you can easily say that it's regular, irregular, or irregularly irregular. QRS morphology is broad as well. And there are a few other things in terms of rate. It's very fast rate for a narrow or a mixed kind of QRS complexes. Second, you can say the changing morphology of QRS. It's RVB, no doubt. But your morphology is constantly changing. It's a big clue towards the diagnosis. And I'll show you what the diagnosis is. In this ECG, irregularly irregular, broad complex, rate around 190, right axis deviation. P is not present. You can't find found P wave. On first glance, QRS morphology in frequent release may resemble RBB, no doubts. Now you can come up with two different things. AF, irregularly irregular with pre-existing RBP, or maybe sometime Ashman phenomena can give you a broad complex, but here you have a changing morphology of QRS. So Diagnosis is clear-cut AF with pre-excitation rather than aberrancy because the points in favor, extremely rapid ventricular rate, which is unusual in a case if conduction is going through a V node. It's only possible when it's there is an excite pre-excitation and an aberrant pathway which is conveying these complexes through this uh, accessory pathway along with a V node, and that's the point in favor of this aberrant pathway, oh, sorry, the pre-excitation is beat to beat variation is QRS morphology. And that's what we did in terms of management because this patient was unstable, easy to decide. The patient underwent successful DC cardioversion with reversion to sinus rhythm. The resolution of hemodynamic instability, the debris ECG taken and it's clearly showing broad QRS, R in V1, and there is delta wave there. And I would conclude these findings in terms of sinus rhythm rate 90, normal P axis, persistent right axis, PR interval in red to be short, delta wave. Dominant R wave, this is associated with left sided accessory pathway and sometimes termed as type 1 WPW pattern. Considering this WPW, the conventional arrhythmia with it, that you have Q waves as well. RVH features, which are not true RVH. This is the ECG. 
But the conventional arrhythmia you have with WPW, as we all know, for the beginners or juniors, there is an pre excitation or additional pathway along with AB node. So if you got a circus movement and anti grade conduction is through the AV node and retrograde through this uh, uh, pre excitation or aberrant uh, pathway, you will got orthodromic type of arrhythmia in which you have a narrow, narrow QRS and very fast rate. But if sometime your anti grade conduction is through the accessory pathway and retrograde through the AV node, you got antidromic. Just for sake of the juniors to identify and remember what is ortho and what is antidromic. So this is orthodromic narrow complex because entry gate is going through a V node. And that is antidromic when your entry grade conduction is going through the accessory path, your pre-excitation. And what happens in AF with WBW? You have a lot of complexes arising within the atria. They found waves, way uh, through either AV node or the conduction, accessory conduction pathway into the ventricle. And that's why you have a mixed kind of QRS complex, sometimes marrow, sometimes wire, sometimes combination. And that's the ECG you have this with AWPW with AF. So in conclusion, I would say our patient was uh, WPW with uh, atrial fibrillation, reason for irregularly irregular broad complex B to B change in QRS morphology. And thanks uh, very much for listening the whole thing and hope it will help you in your future in terms of whenever you are assessing this uh,